on that note, one of the things that uh, I wanted to talk about with you, and it's uh, unfortunately not necessarily been as much of a focus on Birdie 2016 TV up to this point, but uh, some gay rights issues and uh, LGBT issues in general, and just kind of get some more perspective on that from uh, um, some from people from that community. So did you want to expand on that a little bit? Sure, sure. What, I mean, what you uh, do, I know you said you mentioned political science, but I know you do other studies, so you want to expand on that too also. Sure, yeah. So uh, I, I'm a member of the LGBT community. I've, I've stated you know, on my channel, my viewers know. Uh, and part of my political science research is, uh, is studying LGBT rights movements, uh, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, so basically what I do is I kind of look at all of these different countries and I figure out why it's the case that, you know, a conservative country such as Morocco will have a gay rights movement, but a state um, or country, excuse me, such as Tunisia, they don't have one yet. Uh, so my goal is try to figure it out. And a, a large portion of my research, basically the crux of my argument is that uh, if a country has Internet freedom and they have widespread access to the Internet, then they can actually form a movement. And then to kind of oversimplify my research, uh, you can basically predict if a gay rights movement will exist in a country uh, in this region, and I think it's probably going to apply to other authoritarian regimes elsewhere. But basically, uh, you can predict if a gay rights movement will exist by looking at the level of internet freedom, by looking at, you know, internet penetration rates. So that's kind of what I do, and a lot of that, you know, echoes back to the U.S. I follow a lot of LGBT issues here in the U.S. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that, you know, we this is probably the biggest year ever for both transgender rights and LGBT equality, not necessarily, not necessarily that we've made like a lot of legal progress when it comes to transgender equality, but I mean the visibility this year, it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but I mean there's still a lot of work to be done, which is why it's still a, an essential issue to the 2016 campaign. I mean just to go over some statistics, in 29 states you can still be fired just because you're gay or trans. And this affects straight people too, because I mean if you're perceived as someone who is gay, well, as long as you're perceived that way, your employer can fire you. Uh, in plenty of states, I don't know the exact number, you know, someone can refuse service to you for being gay. You know, 28 states, your medical care provider can actually refuse service to you if, you know, they feel as though your sexual orientation or gender identity violates their religion. In two states, literally, like, this blows my mind whenever I say it, but in two states, Arkansas and Tennessee, I'm looking at you guys, uh, it's <laughs> illegal to codify pro-equality legislation. So if Tennessee wants to pass a bill saying you can't discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation, well, guess what? That's illegal. Now, obviously, this is a clear violation you know, of the Equal Protection Clause and the Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution, but nonetheless, the fact that they're on the books, it just shows we've got a, lot, a really long way to go. You know, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, so yeah, it, it's an essential issue still today. Definitely. Yeah, no, that uh, that reminds me very much of the racial equality uh, thing about as far as, you know, we have made huge, lots and lots of progress and huge steps forward, uh, but we still haven't done enough, mm -hmm. and it's easy sometimes to congratulate ourselves on what we've accomplished and then to say, okay, well, we can move on to something else now, but it's very important for us to keep those uh, those issues like you mentioned. It's uh, legal for them to get married, but, you know, if their spouse comes to eat lunch with them, that may be an issue, you know, like, right. and that may be enough to, to rile enough feathers to get them kicked off the job, and that's really just not acceptable, you know, it's like we no. need to we need to be able to share that uh, freedom and be able to express our love like we would anybody else would be able to, and to be able to do things like, you know, whatever it may be, uh, whether it's, you know, meet at work or whatever, you know, without having to worry about, oh, did my coworkers see me, you know, oh, we can't kiss in the parking lot because, you know, if, if somebody sees me, I might get fired, that's... It's kind of absurd, and it's just right. disappointing to hear that that's the the reality that a lot of people face. So, exactly, like we'll mention again, like, well, they may be able to get married, and you know, you still have issues with, like we had with Kim Davis, where while the law says you can get married, there's still going to be people that are stubbornly refusing to acknowledge that you have that right, 